This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Just passed a quarter of the way through the final draft. After so many years of being stuck on this story, I'm gonna say goodbye to it. Finishing this book this month. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another vlog. It has been a while since I last filmed a Project Teacup vlog. I have so many things to update you on. The progress on Project Teacup, what I've been up to, the plan moving forward, there's so many things. Before I get into that though, just in case anyone's new here, hello, my name is Christy. I am a writer and video maker and I'm currently working on an adult fantasy novel named Project Teacup. That's not the name of the book, but it's the code name we're going by. And the story is currently on its fourth draft, which is really exciting. It's the final draft. I know that now. We are almost finished with the novel, which is absolutely bonkers to me. It feels like not super long ago that I started making this series and vlogging all of this and sharing with you guys, you know, the early trials and tribulations of writing this story. But anyway, before I ramble, let's go make a cup of tea and I can sit down and I can give you updates on Project Teacup and how that's going. Just so you know, this is me every time I film. It's me just spot cleaning as I go. Updates on Project Teacup and how all of that has been going. Today is Tuesday the 11th of July and I'm working on chapter 12 of draft 4 of the story. So I that was a hair on the, the, the coffee table but it's not, it's just a really big scratch. <laughs> So chapter 12 of roughly 40 chapters. I did say that I deleted a bunch of chapters, but I have an extra chapter to add in. I think it's gonna roughly be 40 chapters. And because of the way my brain works, if it comes out at 39 chapters, I'm gonna find a way to make it 40 chapters so that it feels <laughs> even. That's where I'm currently up to on the story. I started writing this draft back when we were in Japan. It took me ages to get started on draft four because I was really struggling to find the sort of final voice of the story story because the way that I do my drafts is that basically copy paste my documents I'll have a new document and then I will word by word rewrite the story while I have the old draft sitting just beneath what I'd written. There was another author whose work I'd read in uni. I can't remember who the author was. It was around the time that I was reading Peter Carey but it wasn't Peter Carey. I read that this author did that. Every time they did a draft they would write from scratch and at the time I was like that's such a silly way to work. Like why would you do that? What a waste of time. And now that's my exact same process because it's the only way I feel like I can concisely and cleanly rewrite everything. So anyway, I was sitting in a tea house in Tokyo, the Aoyama Flower Market Cafe actually. I've always wanted to go there. It was raining outside but there was a veranda and there was no line and I was just like, you know what, screw it, I'm just gonna try and go right at the really pretty tea house. That was sort of the first day after many days of work that I found the final voice of the story, the final tone. And so I started work in May on this draft but it's been kind of slow and haphazard. It's now July. I'm finally on the final stretch of draft four which is the final draft of the story and I am still intending on finishing this book this month. <laughs> I am gonna start writing for today. Let me pull up my document. I get asked a lot of questions actually from people who want to know what kind of software I use to write my stories. I just use MS Word and I know that Scrivener exists and I know that there are a bunch of other systems that are probably much better, but like Microsoft Word is what I've always used. It's, it's really easy to use. And the way that I do this is that I have everything saved to OneDrive. And so it means that I can work on my tablet, write the story, it saves automatically so that there's no fear ever of me losing any of my work. Um, and then it's automatically uploaded to my OneDrive so I can access it from my computer, I can access it from my phone. So I'm currently halfway through chapter 12, which on this version of the document is page up. 
actually 112. <laughs> I've got all of my new writing in dark blue, I've got all of my old writing in black, and I'm just slowly, slowly fixing everything line by line, particularly the dialogue. I've, I've found that a lot of my dialogue is kind of bloated and could be made more concise. I'm constantly battling the words of this story. You guys all know if you've been watching the other videos that I've been trying and trying to get the story down to a hundred thousand words. I think it was sitting at around 117k when I finished draft three. The story is now sitting at around 107,000. I think if we're able to cut it down anymore it's going to be pretty lucky. I think at this point it's not it's not going to get down to 100,000 words but I'm going to sit here, drink my tea and go back to working on draft four of this story. Actually I need to get my glasses first. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking a small break. I'm gonna have a little snack. I made these protein balls out of oats and peanut butter and chocolate. They're amazing. You don't bake them. You just leave them in the freezer. So every now and then I just go to the freezer and grab one and you don't have to worry about it going bad because it's already in the freezer. So I'm just gonna grab one of these. They're really good. Okay, this one. This is my uh, protein ball, which I made, which is basically just peanut butter and um, chia seeds and chocolate, but it's, they're so good. They're so very good. I'm thinking next time that I'm actually gonna try the recipe with chocolate and orange, because I love the combination of dark chocolate and orange. It is the best. I'm working away on chapter 12. It's going, not, not slowly. This one's actually going okay. So basically this chapter acts as kind of like a bridging chapter. Like there's a lot of stuff going on here, but it brings together two different important moments. And I'm finding that with this chapter, there's a lot of words I can actually cut and rearrange. I'm finding that there are little bits of, of the characters and what's going on that need to be included in this chapter that haven't been included. There are little bits that add to the, you know, like verisimilitude, the moments that make it feel realistic and real that just, that need to be added into the story because I've been sitting on <laughs> these little scenarios that the characters do for a really long time being like, oh, the character needs to do this. The character has that habit. I need to show it. But that means that I'm needing to rewrite a bunch of the chapter and I'm having to delete a lot of stuff. Um, but deleting stuff is really good because that gets down my word count, which has been the thing that I have been wrestling this entire time. I'll go back to writing and then I think I'm going to move to my desk in a moment. This isn't, you know, the most ergonomic place to work. I do have a standing desk, but I like to move around my apartment because it helps me break up everything. Hello, VoiceOver Christy here to thank the wonderful sponsor of this video, Squarespace. They're a website builder well known for helping people to create beautiful websites with ease. Every time I need to update it, it's incredibly easy. It looks so beautiful with so little effort from me. One of the reasons this is, is because Squarespace uses Fluid Engine, which is a next generation website design system. Squarespace's templates are best in class and you can customize every design detail with drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. Fluid Engine is built in and ready to go on any new Squarespace site so that you can build your perfect website and connect with the people who are interested in the things that you make. If you're looking to make a website, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Christy Ann Jones to save 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. It is now a little while later. I'm sitting here with my lunch. I have a noodle bowl. I've been working away on chapter 12 and it's been a bit of a funny one. As I said, I had a bit of rewriting that I had to do with this particular chapter. And so as I've been sitting here eating, I've just kind of been scrolling through and rereading all of my writing. Normally I will have a proper break over lunch, but today I just kind of feel quite entrenched in the story. So I just want to keep going with it and working on it. I have YouTube and admin work I need to do this afternoon. So I want to make sure I'm getting as much writing work done as I can while I can do it. I think I should be pretty much good to finish chapter 12 today. I think we're currently three quarters of the way through. There's some more like problem solving stuff I need to do, which is always the kind of thing that takes a lot of time. I also find that as I'm at this stage of the project that I need to be really diligent about fixing continuity problems as I go. So like, for example, the name of this 
country where it's set, there's a little uh, accent on one of the letters. And so every time I write that particular word, I need to go back and make sure that it's it's stylized the exact same way. And so I'm constantly going back and making sure that I'm, you know, <laughs> fixing problems as they arise or as I notice them rather than leaving them for later, because this is the last significant part of the story I'm going to do. So I start with the old version of the chapter, which is in black. I start writing the new version in blue. And then once the entire chapter is blue and it's completely new, that's not supposed to rhyme, but it does. I will go through and I will listen to the document. I've, I think I've mentioned this a few times before, but I do find that I'm, I'm pretty bad at skipping words when I'm writing and I will misspell a lot of things. And so the best way for me to proofread things is to use words, read aloud function. So you go into review and you press read aloud and it will read out your document for you. And so I use that to help proofread and pick up anything I might've missed. And so I'll do that once this chapter's done. Genuinely feels really close now. It feels like the story's almost, almost done. And I'm starting to feel a little bit sad about that, that after so many years of being stuck on this story, I'm going to say goodbye to it and it's going to be, or at least, you know, as I go through the querying process, I'm not going to be actively working on it anymore. You know, best case scenario, <laughs> the book gets a publishing deal and then I will have to do a lot more work on it. It's a funny thing getting to the end of the project and both wanting desperately to be done with it, but also being a little bit sad to, to finish it. Anyway, I'm going to finish eating my lunch and then I think I'm going to have one more decent writing session this afternoon. <laughs> So I know I did just say that I didn't want to use Scrivener and I was so happy with Word and everything. The thing is that I am so emotionally tied to Word, I would feel really uncomfortable writing in any other kind of software. And yet I'm so aware of the problems of it and the bugs. So my, my biggest problem with Word is the fact that when you have a document that's over like 80,000 words, 100,000 words, the word count starts going a bit wonky. So I showed you in a previous writing vlog that I have a spreadsheet where I track all the words of each chapter. I do this so that I can have a bird's eye view of how the pacing of the novel is going and which chapters have like too many words and it's okay for some chapters to have a lot more words than other chapters if they're important chapters and I'm just I'm managing it that way. However my spreadsheet which I know is correct because I've I've tested it and double checked my spreadsheet says that the word count for the story is currently 106,000 738 words. However, MS Word says that it's 107,300 words. And so that is a little bit over 500 words, the difference, which it doesn't seem significant when you've got like 107,000 words to talk about. But to me, that's significant because when you're trying to like pare down sentences line by line to remove anything, it's, um, it's really significant. Actually, I might show you guys. I'll put you on a tripod so I don't have to worry about doing a tracking blur as my hands move, but let me set this up. Hello, you guys are absolutely not allowed to see my desk right now because it's currently tax time in Australia and my desk is covered in receipts and tax nonsense. But here is my <laughs> spreadsheet. Da -da -da -da. I'm assuming that most of this is blurred for you. I have shown this spreadsheet before, but to anyone who hasn't seen it, this is how I'm visualizing the whole novel. Over here, I have the name of the chapter. Over here I have like a one sentence description of what happens in the story, like the really important bits. Over here I have how many words each chapter in draft three was. And then over here I have how many words in each chapter draft four currently is. I'm working on this chapter, which is why it's yellow and not green. And then over here, I have my removed words. So I can see exactly how many words I've removed, how many words I've added. For example, this chapter, chapter nine, I added 447 words because they were essential. I pared down so much of chapter nine and then I had to add a bunch of stuff. So that's why it's up by 400 words. So that's how I track everything. And I can see down the bottom here, that actually the document is 106,000 words. And obviously if you were self-publishing a book, the precise word count wouldn't matter nearly as much. But when you query a book, you have to write a letter to the agent who you want to represent you and say, this is how many words my book is. So you wanna make sure that you get the right number and having a book that's 106,700 is very different to having a book that's 107,300. But I mean, probably that's arbitrary, but to me, that's a big difference. I'm almost done with chapter 12. I have a little bit more time to work today. Let's go grab a snack and some more tea, and then we can do our final writing session of the day.
chapter 12 is now all finished. So I managed to cut out quite a bit. I added some more stuff in. I swapped out some scenarios. I added in little bits of the characters' personalities that I wanted to include that I hadn't managed to yet. So I'm really pleased because I've been problem solving this one specific thing. I have a character who is quite messy and she is the type of person who's often late to appointments. To me, that was a really central part of her character that she's quite put together, but she's also very chaotic. And so for that character, I've always been so acutely aware that that's essential to her personality, but I, I don't think I actually ever included it anywhere on the page. And so I had to make sure I put that in quite early on. And so that the reader can understand this part of her personality. So that's what I added to chapter 12. And as I mentioned, it's a bit of a bridging chapter between two important bits. So chapter 13 is a very short chapter. It's from a different perspective. And then chapter 14 is a really big, important chapter that's quite large. It's going to take a lot of work to edit that one down. Although every now and then I'm quite surprised. I get to a chapter and then I'm like, there's very little work to do here. I don't really have much to cut out because it's pretty concise. And then I'll get to another chapter and then it'll be like, wow. I have, I have a lot of stuff to do <laughs> with this one. But so much of it is me just feeling my way and trying to work out what feels right. And we're kind of getting to a point in the story where I've done as much work as I can and I've made the story as strong as it can be. We're getting to a point where if I spend more time on it, I'm not making it better, I'm just making it different. And that's the point where I think you need to step back and say, it's never gonna be perfect. It's never gonna be 100% absolutely perfect. You just need to send it off and get it submitted. I also am noticing that I'm getting to the part of the story where I feel really compelled to no life it and just write until I'm done. I do this with everything. Like I do this with TV shows or video games. If I can see the end, in sight, it's the only thing I want to do. I'll obsess over it until it's done. And so I'm, I'm almost getting to that point with the story where I feel like I'm at the, almost at the top of a very, very big mountain and I want to sprint to the end. It's really, really exciting. We're almost there. I'm not halfway, I'm only, I'm only just past a quarter of the way through the final draft. But as soon as I get to the end of the draft, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print it off. I'm gonna do one final read and one very minor set of copy edits on that final draft and then that's going to be it. I'm going to submit the book to agents. I've got about five agents picked out so far. I have some more research I need to do in terms of agents I want to send the book to. I've already got my main query letter written. I pulled out my query letter from when I submitted my last novel back in 2020. For those of you who don't know, I submitted a novel three years ago and it got rejected by everyone, but I pulled out that query letter, which I did actually manage to get some requests off of that query letter. So I was like, okay, it's, it's probably a not too bad query letter and I read through it and I was so embarrassed. I was like, this is the shittest letter. <laughs> like, I just, I didn't know how to write professionally yet. I was only like a year and a bit into working full time. I wasn't very confident in the way that I wrote. You can sort of see my age in that query letter. You can see my lack of experience and my lack of confidence. And so I'm really buoyed by the fact that <laughs> I managed to get requests off of that query letter because I look at it now and I'm like, oh my God, that's so bad. So I've rewritten my query letter. I'm really happy with what it looks like now. I still need to write the synopses of the book. So some agents will ask for a one pager, which describes your plot and includes spoilers. Some agents will ask for a two pager. Some have different requirements and you need to make sure that you fulfill the different requirements of each agency you submit to, because obviously it's a pretty big red flag if you don't follow instructions from the outset. So that means you have to write a bunch of different synopses because some places want different lengths and whatever. But as soon as I've done the very last pass on this book, finish the synopses, I can just start sending out queries with this book and then I am on to the next project. So yeah, really, really exciting. I wanna have a big old sleep after this. I'm planning on taking a bit of a break in August and just having nothing to do for a little bit because it's been a whirlwind the last, I don't know, the last year, the last several years, everything has been so nuts. And I think this will be the first time, oh goodness, I think this will be the first time since I was maybe 16 that I haven't had an active project that I'm working on. So I came up with the first novel when I was 16. I worked on it for a stupid amount of time. And by the time I was finishing that book, I'd already started work on A Year in Tokyo, which is my illustrated Tokyo guide and memoir that I released. And then 
by the time I was finishing that I was already working on this book and so I've kind of constantly had overlap with creative projects and felt the pinch of time and and my own self-imposed deadlines that whole time and so this is the first time since I was a child that <laughs> I'm not gonna have any specific important project pressing down on me so that's gonna be a bit bizarre. I'm gonna take a week off, go for some hikes, do all that kind of stuff. I'm looking forward to it but before that I need to finish this novel and I'm really excited about it and we're almost there. Anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this very laid-back chill cozy project teacup vlog. I don't know how many of these I have left but I just wanted to chat to you guys today about this book and I hope you enjoyed it. Before I go I did also want to say an enormous thank you to everyone over on Patreon for supporting my channel and supporting my writing work over there. I put all of my first updates with writing. We have our book club, we have our discord server, there's exclusive videos, all of these things. So if you want to check out Patreon please feel free. There's a link in the description down below. Take care everyone and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.